Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the tutorial number 11 of the series Special Effects for Games. I'm using Unity 5.5 and today, since a lot of people requested, we are going to see how to create one of these hit effects and the rest of the hits will be available in my Patreon in case you are interested to have access. I also have much more effects available in my channel in case you want to learn other special effects. Some of these hits are sci-fi hits or fantasy hits, but the methods and the tricks that I will show you will give a nice notion on how to create your own hits. So let's see how we can do this. And as usual, we always start by creating an empty game object. I'm gonna rename it to Particle System Eat. And inside this empty game object, we can create a new particle system. And this one we can rename it to Beam of Light, which in this case it's going to give the sensation of glow, of boom, to our particle system. And our hit will have a loop of 3 seconds, so let's set the duration to 3. And now we can set the start speed to 0, since this is going to be in the same position. And we can also turn off shape. We don't need that for this particle system. We can set the max particles to around 3, at least for now, and the rate over time is going to be 0, because we are going to use bursts. And in the bursts we can set a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 3. And as you may notice, the lifetime of this beam effect is too big, it's 5 seconds. Since this is going to be hit, this is going to be a very quick effect. We are going to lower it between 0.4 and 0.6. At least for now, we can set the start size to between 15 and 20. I think it's a little bit too much, and I will decrease it, probably. And now we can go ahead and smooth the beginning and the end. We are going to fade in and fade out with color over lifetime. And this is really easy to use. The keys on top controls the opacity. And you can add a new key with mouse 1. And the keys on the bottom controls the color. And what we need to do is to change the beginning color to a darker blue and the end to a lighter blue. Of course you can set any color you want. I'm going to use blue for this effect. And what we want to do is to smooth the beginning. And we do that by decreasing the alpha to 0. And we can also decrease the alpha of the end key, like this. And the next thing we can do is turn on size over lifetime, which will allow us to control the size since the particle is born until it's dead. And we can add new keys with the right click mouse, like this, so we can create a curve similar to this one, which will make the particle quickly grow in the beginning and then it will slowly fade away. Okay, that's looking good. We just want to go to render and set the max particle size to at least 3 so when we get closer to the beam of light, the beam of light will not shrink. Now let's go ahead and create a light, a point light, and we can rename it to heat light. Let's also create a folder, a new folder, and rename it to heat like this, and now we can create a prefab of the heat light by dragging to the folder. And if we go back to beam of light, if we go down here, we can see a parameter saying light, and we can turn it on, and this will allow us to drag and drop the prefab light. We can set the ratio to 1, so we can see the light, like this, and the light is too strong, so let's set the range multiplier and the intensity multiplier to be random between 0.8 and 1.2. And we want to set the maximum light to 1, which is enough for this effect. And since this is a heat effect, you don't necessarily need to use a light. You just use it if you want. Now let's go ahead and create a new particle system. And we can rename it to blue particles. Let's set the duration to 3, so it matches the beam of light. And first thing we want to do is change the shape to a sphere, because we want this particle system to emit in every direction. Let's also set the emission, the rate over time, to 0. And we want to use bursts, so let's add a new burst, which is going to emit a minimum of 30 and a maximum of 150. And now we can control the amount of maximum particles, and I'm going to say 30 for now, 
but you can increase it or decrease it to your own taste. And now as you may have noticed the particles are leaving too much and we can decrease the start lifetime to values between 0.3 and 0.7 which I think is enough for a quick effect like this one. We can also change the start speed now to a bigger value so we can create much faster particles and values between 6 and 10 are also good. The start size, we want the particles to be really small and I'm going to set the random values between 0.02 and 0.2. And we want these particles to be really small because now if you go to the render, we want to select in the render mode stretch billboard. And this will allow us to increase just a tiny little bit the speed scale to around 0.4 and it will create these stretched particles which gives a really cool effect for this heat particle system. Now we want to give it some color and we can do this in the color of a lifetime. I'm gonna use the same gradient that I've used before in the beam of light and we can also change the start color if you want. Now the next thing we want to do is set the size over lifetime to a curve similar to this one, it won't make much difference because those are very small particles. Ok, now we can duplicate these blue particles because we are going to create some white particles. Which we pretty much only need to change the color. And now we can see everything working together if you select the blue particles and the white particles and drag to the beam of light. And now I notice that the beam of light is too big, it's really big and I'm going to decrease it to around 5 and 10. Maybe even smaller, that's up to you. And now to give another small detail, we can duplicate the blue particles and rename it to only particles. And uh, the major difference is that these particles will not have a stretched billboard. We'll only have a billboard, a normal billboard. And it will create these small particles, as you can see. You can increase their size, you can also increase their maximum particles if you want. The idea is that it gives some detail, some more detail to our heat particle system. Ok, that's looking great, that's looking interesting. But the next thing we need to do is to create an image similar to this one. Let's go to Photoshop or to your image editing software. And I'm going to create a new file with 1000 by 1000 and we name it heat. I'm going to paint the background to black and now with the pen tool I'm going to create this shape and as you may notice if you click and drag you can create a Bezier curve and with control this white arrow will appear and you can move around the points like this. And we want to create something very similar to this. Now that you have your shape created we can set the field to white and you can create a copy if you want, duplicate this shape because we are going to apply a box blur and Photoshop will ask us if you want to rasterize the shape and we can say yes and now I'm just going to create a, a small blur with 4 pixels. We can double click on the shape layer and the layer style options will appear and here we can turn on outer glow, set it to white and increase the size and spread just a little bit just to give this nice glow around our shape. Now with C we can control the canvas and only select what we want to export, like I'm doing. And then we can hide the black background and save as a PNG to Unity. Once you have imported to Unity, we can create a new material. Give it the same name as our image, just for consistency. And the shader we can go ahead and select Particles Additive. We can drag and drop the image that we have created to our material and now we can go ahead and create a new particle system which is going to be called heat as well. Let's set the duration to be equal to the other particle system which is 3 in my case and we are going to set the shape to sphere so it can emit in every direction. I'm going to decrease the max particles to 10 and the rate over time it's going to be 0 because we are going to use bursts. We can add a new burst with a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 150. 
and now you can control the amount of max particles in the max particles parameter. Now let's decrease the start lifetime because this is a hit and it's going to be a very fast effect. So let's set the start lifetime to be between 0.3 and 0.7. Then we can also go ahead and decrease the start speed. Because this one is not going to move a lot compared to the blue particles and the white particles. And let's just drag and drop the material that we have created for the hit. Now as you may have noticed the image that we have created doesn't have the respective size that we have created. And we can control the size by turning on 3D start size. And for me what worked were values between 1 and 2 in the X and 3 and 2 for the Y. And as you can see now, the shape looks pretty much the same as the one we have created in Photoshop. And it's also good that they all don't look the same, because it's going to create some randomness. And as you can see, they are all not facing in the right direction. And we can fix this by going to Shape and turn on Emit from Shell and Align to Direction. And now, if we go up here and turn on Start Size, 3D Start Size, we can control the rotation of the X, Y and Z axis. And for me, the values that worked best were 19 the X, 0 in the Y and 19 Z. As you can see, they go to different directions which is looking good in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and change the start color and I'm going to use a darker blue and another color which is going to be kind of an orange, red orange. Now let's go ahead and fade in and fade out the beginning of the particles by turning on color over lifetime. You can use color if you want, that's, that's up to you. And after you have selected your gradient and you have found the color for your heat particle system, we can go ahead and turn on size over lifetime. And for this particle system, we are going to use one of the curves that we have already created for the beam of light. And it's starting to look much better. Let's just go to render and set the max particle size to 3, so we can get closer and the particles doesn't shrink. Finally, we can drag the heat to the beam of light, in case you haven't done it already, and we can see everything working together. And uh, this effect is already looking pretty great, we could already stop here and the effect will look good. But I'm going to show you a little trick with a 3D object. We can create a sphere, like this, and we can drag to our heat folder, to create a prefab, delete the one in the scene, and now let's go ahead and duplicate the beam of light, delete the children and rename this to sphere. And basically we can turn off lights and the, the only thing we pretty much need to do is to go to the render mode and select mesh. And now in mesh we can select our sphere, like this. And as you can see this sphere gives another detail which is looking great in my opinion. You can do a lot of things with 3D objects by the way. And I'm just going to decrease the max particles to 1 and maybe decrease the start size, which I think is too big, the sphere. You can also turn on start rotation, so the sphere can always spawn with a different rotation. And now if you press play, you can see that it's looking great and you have created your heat effect. And you can create a lot of things with this method. So that's it guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it and uh, feel free to ask any questions. If you want to have access to all the effects, you can go to my Patreon page and you can support me there. I will appreciate it a lot. And subscribe for weekly game development tutorials. See you in the next one.